What's up, guys? It's Friday. It's June 9th. It's 11.39 a.m. And this is the crypto newsletter. So starting off, we got the U.S. House Committee releases new stablecoin bill draft. The draft bill is set to go before the House Committee for discussion on June 13th. So next week, there's a lot of things lining up as far as hearings going on, as far as the SC and like the Hinman emails and conferences. So next week is going to be a volatile week, and we're already seeing the the crypto market start to get volatile as well, too. So the United States House Financial Service Committee has released the third draft of the stablecoin bill presented by the chair. The latest draft of the bill is bipartisan and includes specific proposals from Republican and Democrat committee members. It's titled The Future of Digital Assets, Providing Clarity for the Digital Asset Ecosystem. And it was first proposed on June 8th, and it's expected to be discussed at the upcoming committee hearing on June 13th. So the bill aims to offer state regulators powers to oversee the companies issuing the tokens. And it discusses legislation regarding who can issue stable coins and the requirements of a payment stable coin. If approved, the bill will be first the first comprehensive guidance on the supervision and enforcement of stablecoin markets in the U.S., and the bill also proposes a two-year moratorium for collateralized stablecoins from the date of enactment. So next week, a lot of things going on. I'm going to make that summary of events PDF doc so we can kind of be forward-looking into what's coming up for the month of June and just the summer. Then we have how blockchain and digital assets can free up capital trapped in cross-border treasury flows. This is from payments.com. And payments as we know them today involve unnecessary pain points, dysfunction, and archaic technology. Blockchain and digital asset technology have the potential to transform and transcend industries, particularly financial services, which are ripe for innovation. With the promise of faster, more affordable, transparent payments, as well as the ability to offer new financial services to customers and tap into new revenue streams, these technologies will underpin the financial infrastructure, the future of it. And that's what we covered in our newsletter yesterday, how the Chainlink CEO said that everything ultimately Anything of value is going to run on the blockchain. And then I showed you the timeline document, 2025. These technologies will underpin the future of financial infrastructure. Nowhere is this truer than within the 156 trillion cross-border payments market. 156 trillion. The primary pain points are around speed, reliability, transparency, and costs. The managing director of the Americas at Enterprise Blockchain and Crypto Solutions provider Ripple told payments... He explained that traditional global payments are fragmented and inefficient, relying on a complex system of correspondent banking. As a result, sending payments across borders can be slow, unreliable, opaque, and expensive. And because existing legacy systems have long been accepted as status quo, ultimately their inefficiencies impact financial le- finance leaders' business decisions and companies' bottom lines. So making frictionless cross-border payments a reality. While the initial appeal of digital assets may have taken a hit from ongoing industry turmoil, regulatory scrutiny, and lawsuits, finance leaders' confidence in the technology hasn't waned as it's underpinned by the understanding that it provides several critical benefits to streamlining cross-border payments. So legacy cross-border solutions require pre-funded accounts, trapping often substantial amounts of capital on foreign bank accounts. So you've got a number of correspondent banks in the flow that are charging different fees and you have the added burden of pre-funded accounts. Rather than attempting to establish correspondent banking relationships for each new market or territory, businesses seeking sustainable growth should seek a robust, compliant, and secure all-in-one cross-border payment solution. This relieves the finance and treasury function of a variety of different burdens they face using legacy solutions, including wire cutoff times, holidays and banking hours, all of which make traditional cross-border payments a a complex labyrinth to navigate. With blockchain and crypto-enabled payments, values transferred instantaneously, enabling enabling real-time settlement and payout. Cross-border payments powered by blockchain and crypto can be made on demand 24-7, 365. The transferred funds are where they need to be when they need to be there. Streamlining global treasury flows. So interoperability between payment systems doesn't just provide better visibility into growing international operations, but can also help ensure compliance controls and B2B experience standards are met. When you're talking about complex corridors where a payment might need to go through multiple corresponding banks before landing in its destination market, the benefits of crypto are obvious. He explained that for businesses with entities in different markets that need to, for example, make payroll in each of those jurisdictions, think about Uber. Now Uber's worldwide or Amazon, how they're worldwide. Having all the different currencies in these foreign correspondent banking accounts, in these foreign banks is trapped uh, to be able to pay out these different different kind of people that are working for their companies for payroll. Having that like a supranational asset like XRP to be able to hold that on the books and then be able to 
efficiently and instantaneously swap to any currency is definitely a more kind of efficient way and safer way, I would say, for an international company rather than holding currencies that are rapidly depreciating. So there's a pretty significant effort that goes into moving money between those entities and rebalancing the treasury because the historical cross-border frictions around time sens sensitivities, costs, and transparencies are amplified. Blockchain solutions like Ripple's own payment solution use digital assets as a bridge between fiat currency pairs. These digital asset bridges are generally fast, scalable, and low cost, making them ideal for payments. For example, transactions using the XRP token typically settle in three to five seconds and cost fractions of a penny. Financial institutions can use blockchain-based digital assets to source liquidity on demand and avoid pre-funding destination accounts, which frees up trapped capital that would otherwise be sitting in a bank account. Overall, financial institutions and corporate treasury teams around the world would certainly agree that a faster, more affordable and transparent approach to cross-border treasury flows can offer a better path forward and pave the way for a new normal and B2B cross-border payments. It's a very exciting time. What we've seen at a global level on the regulatory front is increasing clarity in many different markets around the world. In lockstep with that, we've seen institutional adoption of crypto go way up, which will embolden additional ways of institutional customers. There we go. So there we go. Hong Kong Monetary Authority to prepare for a retail CBDC. The regulator will start conducting in-depth studies and pilots on the implementation of a future EH. EHKD. And I believe that in the report, Ripple was a part of the, kind of the, the participants in it. But the Hong Kong Monetary Authority has said it will start laying the foundation to implement a retail central bank digital currency. Although it had been looking into the development of the digital version of the Hong Kong dollar dubbed EHKD since at least 2017, a recent study and comments received from two rounds of market consultation has convinced the HKMA that it's necessary to at least start paving the way for possible future implementation of a retail CBDC. So they'll, they'll start to work to lay the foundations for and conduct in-depth studies and pilots on the implementation and application of such a currency. Central banks around the world are increasingly exploring design options and applications for digital versions of sovereign currencies with the Bank of International Settlements. And while it appears that the e-Hong Kong dollar might not have an imminent role to play in the current retail payment market, we believe prospective use cases for e-Hong Kong dollar can emerge quickly out of the rapid evolution or even revolution in the digital economy. So in April, the Hong Kong regula regulator may be leaning towards developing the e-Hong Kong dollar on a permission blockchain and allowing private banks to handle implementation. Although respondents in the Hong Kong Monetary Authority study proposed the exploration of blockchain solutions for the e-Hong Kong dollar, the regulator said in a Friday's report that it'll be considering various factors from policy objectives to measures adopted by other jurisdictions and further explore technically feasible solutions on the subject matter. Then we have Binance.us suspends use of fiat as legal troubles mount. So this was yesterday or last night. And uh, we had sent an email out a couple of days ago saying to withdraw off of there because this was expected. So the, ex the exchange says users should withdraw USD as soon as possible as the SEC engages in extremely aggressive and intimidating tactics against the company. So that is expected to happen June 13th. So all those dates lining up, June 13th, something's happening. So, and then June 15th, Femex is the list in 26 USD margin contract. So a lot of things are kind of lining with next week being big. Then Curve Finance CEO sued by three DeFi focused venture capital firms. I was always skeptical of Curve Finance, uh, supposedly for fraud. So alleged fraud. So let's keep going because Robinhood ends support for some tokens named in the SC lawsuit as securities. The trading platform will end support for Cardano, Polygon, and Solana on June 27th. And based on our latest review, we decided to end support for Cardano, Polygon, and Matic, uh, Poly Polygon, and Solana. And no other coins are affected and your, crypt your crypto is still safe on Robinhood. So that's happening June 27. But then Coinbase, they said that we will not delist tokens deemed securities by the SEC and have no plans to phase out staking services. And then uh, Craig Dewitt said, does this mean what I think it does? Realist in XRP, we'll see. Then we have former CFTC chairman Heath Tarbert joins Circle as chief legal officer. Tarbert will guide the company's global strategy as it contends with regulatory issues in the US, and that's going to be effective July 1st. So we got a heavy hitter going to Circle. Circle's in it for the long run, that's for sure. So Circle CEO said, as we continue building a bridge between traditional finance and Web3, uh, Heath's perspective, legal acumen, and global regulatory experience will help us advance the utility value of USDC worldwide. 
then alleged crypto securities tank alongside BNB after SEC scattershot securities la labels aimed at major cryptocurrency sent prices lower. Bitcoin, however, remains unfazed. So Sandbox, Algorand, Cardano, Binance, CoinFlow, Filecoin, Polygon, uh, Chili's, Cosmos, ICP, Voyager, uh, Centraland, Axie Infinity, Nier and Solana have all collapsed between 10 to 18% since the word of the SC lawsuits first broke. So there's an all out attack on crypto right now. Pakistan to launch digital currency and likeness of Bitcoin. So the State Bank of Pakistan has recently revealed its plan to develop its digital currency reported to be in the likeness of Bitcoin, joining the ranks of countries attempting their own version of CBDC. So according to the report, Pakistan intends to introduce its own digital currency with features comparable to Bitcoin as a replacement for physical currency, aligning with the current global trend observed in other countries' pursuit of their own central bank digital currency. Everywhere across the world, every single country is going to be launching, launching this. And then Binance.us suspends dollar deposits, so we already know that. And then we have Mt. Gox hackers are two Russian nationals. So the U.S. Department of Just Justice alleges an indictment. One of the individuals also operated BTCE, the DOJ alleged. And uh, they finally, I guess, figured out who it was. So this happened back in like 2000, 2015. Or actually, no, it was around September 2011. So the hacking of 2011 for Mt. Gox. And then we have Robinhood joins Coinbase in saying it tried to come in and register like the SEC wanted. The company's top lawyers testified in the House crypto hearing that they spent months trying to get the SEC to help them comply before being rebuffed. So the SEC is just doing what they want to do. But when Coinbase has attempted to just to do just that, to talk about how we could register as a broker dealer or an alternative trading system, or even as national securities exchange after months and months of discussion, we're simply dismissed with no response or any counter proposal or ideas coming back from that seat. Instead, they turn around and then sue them. So then let's go to this. So important dates for the industry coming up. MICA has now been published in the official journal of the EU. This means crypto businesses now have firm timelines to implement and be compliant with MICA's requirements. Stablecoin rules apply from June 30th, 2024. Rules for exchanges December 30th, 2024. So by 2025, it's all set in stone. So then you have this guy, XRP is setting up the most bullish explosive pattern in the entire crypto industry. Might be the only coin with the capability of making you rich this year or broke. I'm back in long and we'll soon release a video about it. So every now everybody's starting to talk about it as far as XRP because it really is showing a lot of strength during this time. And then lastly, we have this. People are starting to pick up on what's going down, ISO 222, BRICS will unite and begin digital trade of oil and gas in a crypto asset. Fed now is ready, BRICS is ready, XRP is ready. Let's hear it. Uh, ISO 222. And this, I think, goes beyond the BRICS. We can hear so much on show about the BRICS to extricate themselves from about, you know, 60% of the world's resources. And, and it sounds great. But if you look at ISO 222, it's called a single standardization approach, methodology, process, repository to be used by all financial standards missions. Well, that covers everything. That covers cash to society, it covers CBDC, it covers interbank transfers, it covers the BRICS, covers doing away with the second changing the sort anything to do with all financial standards initiatives. And guess who signed on the BRICS? So you have to really question these things quite. So then you have this, we have gold, we have energy resources, we have XRP, each of them can't exist without each other. Gold and energy resources provide value to XRP. XRP provides liquidity to both above. We have it all. So yeah, physical commodities and these now digital commodities are gonna go hand in hand together. So that's it for the crypto newsletters guys. And I'll see you in the next video.